Hello everyone, this is CypherDeck, and today we're back talking about Monsters and Memories. I can't get it off of my mind since the playtest, and I'm probably guessing that you can't either, as we're all chomping at the bit to see more of the game and following the streams of the developers, um, A Loving Robot, Zookin, uh, VGFX, um... Paytas, I, I know I'm missing one more, and I hate the I hate muscle for it. Um, but oh, and Goblin, uh, at least those are the ones that I can get off the top of my head. Just seeing air like uh, the the transition from 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 point to point as they go along in the build of the game. So it is it is like a thing that I think about a lot now after the playtest so we're going to talk specifically about the necromancer today though because the necromancer is the class that i played and i think once everything goes live this will be my my class that focus to max level focus to best in slot then make alts kind of character um just because of the fact that it seems like it, it fits my play style grouping or solo uh, i will always have the ability to do something at least so let's start by talking about the different races that can be the necromancer so the first three are the deep races so you have the deep dwarves elves and gnomes which can be necromancer then you can have the gnome and the human and finally, the one that's kind of odd that sticks out to me is the ogre. Now, during the playtest, I went through and I checked every race and what classes they could be. I am 100% sure after looking back through my video, there was not Necromancer listed. So it was not an option. So I'm wondering if they're still... Um, as they're building the class, as they're balancing the spells, if they're deciding if that's going to be an option or not. And everything can always change, so it's not uh, set in stone, it's just more of, here is my thinking on the ogre itself. So I don't see it completely out of the the reign of being or possibility because of the fact that in dark age of camelot there is a bone dancer and one of the races that can be a bone dancer is the troll which is the largest race in the game they do have higher health they have higher stamina uh they have higher strength but as all mmos do uh, stats don't always mean everything. Uh, you have a boost starting your, your class with that, uh, that race, but through gear, everything does have a max point. So 255 strength is your max or 255 stamina is your max. You will be able to reach the same endpoint as say a, an ogre. It's just going to mean that you're going to have to work harder at it. You're going to have to find those items to do so. So I'm not really worried about it on that front. Um, I just think it's really interesting. I want to see an ogre in full robes and garb and backpack and running through the seas of, of uh, the sands. Just because I think it would be odd and fun and funny all at the same time so uh while it is the kind of sticking out of all the other small and medium races it is still kind of funny uh that it is there uh so class uh itself i wanted to compare it to different classes that i've played as far as necromancers in different games if I don't mention a game that uh, you've played that had a necromancer, I'm not um, doing it on purpose. I'm just going based off of my personal 
information, playtime, and understanding. Um, so the games that I'll be talking about mostly are EverQuest, EverQuest 2, and World of Warcraft. There's a video that talks about every class so um, and how they are be to be perceived as a class as you go through the game. One of the things that caught my personal uh, eye is that they talk about the pets. So in EverQuest, uh, at least in classic or as cla classic as you can get, um, you have uh, four types of pets as a necromancer. You have the warrior pet. You have the, well, it's actually three uh, ra uh, classes, but uh, there is a, a fourth kind of change up. So you have the warrior, you have the rogue, and you have the monk pet. You don't get those until later. You pretty much have a warrior pet throughout the whole game. And then you'll, I think you get maybe one or two monks, uh, one or two rogues. Um, and then you get the specter at level 59. So that's the change of specter is the biggest pet. It has the highest uh, life tap. It is just the, the end all be all. And also it isn't a skeleton. It is a big old specter. So what they said in this video is that they plan to have different types of pets sooner. It kind of, kind of not withholding like the specter kind of uh, pet to the last uh, kind of thing. But they didn't really go into specifics. So here is here's some specifics I've seen in other games. So as EverQuest, EverQuest 2 had three pet types, but they were different. You had the melee DPS, which acted like a rogue. Um, it did more damage in, by positioning. Um, it had very little hit points compared to, say, your tank pet, but uh, it was really good DPS if you were in a group. You then had a mage pet, and the mage pet was kind of the same thing as, as the, uh, the rogue pet or the melee DPS pet, except for the fact that instead of engaging with melee, it stayed back and casted with you, um, during fights. And then finally you had the, the behemoth, the tank, uh, pet and through the way they designed the class, if you did any kind of negative effect, lowered the resistance of the mob or um, snared them or anything along those lines, it would heal your pet by, I think it was 75%. <laughs> so it was really hard to kill your pet. That said, you couldn't kill um, the hardest mobs uh, of your level. You, you could kill the, like the second hardest, if you, if you know what I mean. Then you have World of Warcraft, which completely changes up what pets are. So in World of Warcraft, you know, you have the Imp, that's your little DPS, um, sh shoots fireballs, increases the damage of your group, I believe. And then you have your Voidwalker, which is your tank. And then you get weird ones like Succubus, which messes mobs. You get a fill something i i can't remember the name to be honest that i think stops casting from from different mobs and then you have another pet i can't think of but you had these types of pets that did different things for different kinds of situations or groups uh you were in i don't know how monsters and memories is going to go about the pets for the necromancer but because of that video, it got me really intrigued, and I'm, I'm really uh, hoping um, to see something that I haven't seen before, or a different twist on what I have seen before. Um, as far as the rest of the class, you do get life taps, you do get lich, uh, hit point to mana, 
you do get twitch uh, transfer your mana to another person um, you get a long duration dot you get a snare dot um, and then there's other spells I don't know I didn't see a pet haste I didn't see conjure corpse though I did see a reagent merchant that's sold coffins so those spells may just not have been added during the stress test uh, but uh, I don't know I don't know where they're going to go with the necromancer but again I'm excited either way the last thing I really wanted to talk about was the quests and <laughs> how they did the quests I feel it, it may have been different for everybody else and every, every other class, but this is how I saw it. So as everyone else, you get your note as you start the game. It leads you to the necropolis where you hand in a note and you get a bag and it says to bring um, items that you get from the skeletons in the necropolis to this other person. So you get uh, get the items, you do the turn in, and then finally you get your robe. But you get one more piece, and I'm going to talk about that one more piece after this next quest. So that's the first quest. Then there's this other quest that I saw as you go into Necropolis, and I think the person's name was Everett. It's the very first person you see as you go into the building. And you talk to him, and he tells you uh, the story of having an, an apprentice who is lost. But his pet was found uh, wandering the halls of Wormsbane, the tomb that's nearby. So I'm really interested to see, first off, Wormsbane itself. I, I walked into the zone, I uh, walked around a few corners, and then when I noticed I was on a plank over a hole, I turned around and said, nope, <laughs> not me, not right now, I'm only level 3, and this just doesn't look like the place for me to be right now, so I turned right back around and, and left. That said, before I left, I did do a who. And the people who were fighting in there were like level 5, level 6. I don't think there was anyone who is level 7 or level 8 or anything like that. But, uh, so that kind of gives you the level range of the zone. Anyway, you have to go there. You have to find the apprentice's pet. And then, um, I guess bring back some kind of way to signify... The status of the the assistant which also makes me start to think of so here's this quest that's taking me into this dungeon that scared the crap out of me just in, in the first four turns and um it, what kind of item i could get from it honestly i don't know i didn't do the quest is it because so because i wasn't high enough so i i won't know until the next playtest, maybe, where I'll get high enough to figure out what the, the thing is going to be. But then we get back to this other thing. So, when you get your robe, you're given this note. And this note is what lingered in my mind the whole time I played, the rest of the time I played, because of just how ridiculous it is. So, we explored um, at the end of the first day, and we saw the different levels of the mobs and everything. So, this quest, it requires you to get four items from what are higher level mobs. And when I mean higher level, I'm just saying that they're probably higher than level 10 to get these items. So, one of them is like a ghoul's heart, uh, a were-rat's uh, pelt, a, um, a thing that you get from a ghost, and then one other item I can't remember. But you get it at level 1 or 2. Whenever you complete your quest, 
you get you have this note and this note was in my bag the whole time and i just kept opening it and looking at it just anytime we had downtime anytime we were sitting in mid i was looking at that note and all i could think is what the heck is this going to be that they gave me this note at this level <laughs> So I am really, really excited about how they're like, hey, by the way, you can't do it now, but here's a little, you know, note to, to linger on for now. <laughs> so you have the quest, you know who you need to turn it into, you just have to get the levels to get the items. I, that's, I, for me, that's genius. Uh, it may be nothing to anybody else, but that's how I took it specifically. And then the fact that um, what could this item be that you get for this quest at that level? Is it a new robe? Is it a new weapon? Is it, Honestly, if it's any item that goes on my character, it, it will be awesome because I, th I have thought about this note for so long. Even now, <laughs> as I'm talking to you, I'm still thinking about the stupid note that was in my inventory on my character on the second day when the servers went down. So, anyway guys, that's my talk about the Necromancer and Monsters of Memory. I cannot wait to see what comes next i can't wait to watch all the streams to see what's happening and uh yeah i just i hope you guys are in the same mood i i know that it's kind of this this point now in in life where we kind of get jaded after seeing game after game you know regress pantheon i'm sorry you don't really mean to throw that out there but i do because they've really gone backwards i feel but anyway the, let's put that aside the fact that we can see them actively working on this game day and day through their streams just keeps me motivated and ready to play this game so Thank you all for watching. I hope you enjoyed. See you in a crypt somewhere. This is Cypher Deck. Peace out.